Monday ball. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good, Jen. Allie, what do you think? Probably the best uh, group one we've had. I know. It seems yeah. like the group ones are usually very difficult, but that one was pretty good. So great job. So welcome back to the Slide Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Coach Aaron, and tonight we have Allie and Jen joining us. How are you ladies doing? Doing pretty good. I think this week is finally the first week I have missed baseball. Oh, yeah. Just a little bit. Well, I mean, like, there's never an off season, right? So, I mean, you don't all, you don't have, I'm sure you're going to the fields or the cages and hitting there, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we still got tournaments for the girls, but like to be able to sit at home on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night and flip oh, on a baseball on game. game. Yeah. Gotcha. It's, it's that point of the summer. I guess we're in fall now. I know it. Well, that means basketball and football. Hockey. Yeah, I can't. I've never been able to get into hockey. So I just, I don't know the game. I don't understand the game, but it, it's a brutal game. I'd sign my son up to play it. <laughs> I wouldn't play it there. Now that football's over, how was the season for him? Uh, well, they won last night, and so he made the playoffs. So their season continues a little bit more. So, Jen, how's things in your world? I think she's on a delay. They're anyway. good. Um, I'm leaving. Yeah. I... Hey, we can't. Let me try. You. Let me work on a few things. Okay. Let me work on a few things and come back. So, Allie, we have got a large cast of individuals joining us today. Um. And, and I should have confirmed like everyone before the call, but I, I think everyone's here. We are now talking to the 12 U U S baseball team. What is up guys? What is up? What's guys? up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> oh man. This, this might last a couple hours. I don't know. Like there, there's a ton of questions that we could have for you guys. So are you ready? Cause we, we normally ask some really hard questions. We're ready. All right. Yeah, we're All ready. right. What All right. Micah said. So, um, Jen, how are you? Oh, Jen left us again. So she'll be, uh, back. She'll be back shortly. So, uh, Michael, we're going to start with you and here's what we're going to do. dudes. So we're going to go around the room. We're going to let everyone introduce themselves um, what I would like to know is, oh, here comes Jen. <laughs> Listen to the giggling. It's hilarious. All right, Michael. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I, I'm gonna have to mute. I'll have to start muting if we get too loud now. But here we go. All right, Michael. We're gonna start with you, man. I want to know. Um, your name, how long you been playing baseball, where are you from, and what do you think, Allie? What's that mystery question we should ask? Sorry, I was slamming a bag of chips real quick. Um, <laughs> I mean, probably favorite baseball player or baseball team. I mean, something, okay. well, something maybe their idol in the game. Well, let, let's save that one to the towards the end. Let's go with something like weird and crazy. Like, all right, what's your favorite cereal, Michael? Oh. Um. I think uh, cinnamon you, toast. Cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah. All right. Now, now start from the beginning and tell us who you are, where you're from, and how long you played. My name is Mikey Alvarez. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, and I've played baseball for eight years. Awesome. Um, are you a Dolphins fan? Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 We'll let you hang back in here, and you can stay in the room with us. So. All right, we're going to go across from how I see it. So, Coach John, tell us a little yeah, bit about sure. yourself, sir. Uh, I've been the coach of this particular team, which is Arsenal mm -hmm. National, and this is our third year of playing. And this is a great collection of kids that essentially off a of Facebook ad or uh, knew each other from different things that we just invited to come play in this tournament. And the tournament was uh, an international tournament to where they did it like the Little League World Series. They had uh, uh, six U.S. teams on one bracket, six international teams in the other bracket. 
And then we won the U.S. portion and got to play against the international champion for the world championship. And all the other countries were Caribbean countries, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Cayman, uh, Bahamas, uh, Honduras, I think. And so it was fun. Gotcha. Very cool. These, these are celebrities. All right. Well, let, let's move on over. Sammy, tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. So I love to go fishing with my dad on weekends. Um, I play volleyball. I've been playing volleyball for about three years mm -hmm. with my mom and other clubs. Okay. And your favorite cereal? Uh, uh, honey Nut Cheerios. Honey Nut Cheerios. That's not my – I'm a little bit more of a – I'm a Fruity Pebbles guy. So, all right. Who do we got next here? So, Kim, tell us who you are, man. Where are you from? How long you been playing? Um, I'm Cam. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I've been playing for nine years. Wow. And okay. What's your favorite cereal? Uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay. I think that's two for Cinnamon Toast Crunch now. All right. And now, are you a Chiefs fan? Yes. Dude. You just beat my dolphins. Mm -hmm. Are you a, are you a Swifty as well? No. <laughs> okay, I just had to ask. Had to ask. All no. right. All right. We got Michael here. Michael Devereaux. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, man, tell us who you are, where you're from, how long you've been playing. My name is Michael Devereaux. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I've been playing for nine years. Nine years. You know, I'm just now realizing, Jen, that like they, they're throwing out these like eight and nine year numbers and these dudes are only like twelve years old. Michael. They've been playing you? since they were in the crib. I know. I know. Michael. <laughs> now if I looked at your birth certificate right now, what's it really gonna tell me? Uh I'm twelve. Okay. All right. Just just had to put you on the spot there. So all right, what's your favorite cereal, man? My favorite cereal is Captain Crunch. I like some Captain Crunch. I have to go with that one. All right, we're going to move over to Coach Devereaux, sir. Oh. Tell us tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself. He's oh. on mute. Coach, you're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, what did I do? Thanks, there you, there thanks you Micah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I've been coaching youth baseball for yes, I'm playing eight years, mm -hmm. and I've been coaching with Coach John, uh, mm -hmm. the Arsenal, having a great time with his kid, um, traveling to the town and and having fun with these boys and enjoying the excitement that they have. Very cool, very cool, and, and we just we have to throw out there, sir. You you've had a professional career, is that correct? I did. All right. Tell us the teams that you've played for. I played mainly for the Baltimore Orioles, and I also I played there for uh, seven years, and I played for the Dodgers, uh, Braves, the White Sox, and the Texas Rangers. Won the World Series with the Braves and the Dodgers. Awesome. Well, congratulations, sir. Thank you. And, and welcome to the slide. Thank you. Um, Allie, we're going to let you go, and you can just introduce yourself to these boys because you're going to be asking some super hard questions. All right, I'm Coach Allie. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Uh, I run a girls baseball team out here, and that's actually how I heard about you guys when my girls team was at Cooperstown. I think it was opening ceremonies when the girls were going through Instagram, and they were like, Coach, no way. Did you see the score of the USA game? Did you see what these guys did? Did you see how many runs they scored? Um, so my girls were for sure talking about you, and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. It's an honor to meet all of you representing USA. And then I think what Coach Aaron's getting at is I work in Los Angeles for the Dodgers. I work as a ball girl on the field, and it's been six seasons of really cool memories out there. Very cool. And there's a couple Dodger fans in here. I think one of them, Sammy, I think, or Micah, his dog's name's Mookie Bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so Mookie's awesome. He's one of the best, best all-around yeah. athletes and just people at the field. Awesome. All right, Cooper, you're up, man. Uh, my name's Cooper. 
I'm from Bettendorf, Iowa. Um, I've been playing for nine years. Nine years, and you're you're still twelve, right? Yep, since I was three. I just turned twelve, like <laughs> okay, less than okay. a month ago. Gotcha, gotcha. Coach Jen, who are you? My name is Jen. I live in the same town as Coach Aaron. We're about a mile from each other, and um, yeah, I played softball since the time I was probably three or four. Played through college. Has have coached a little bit. And I have a six-year-old daughter now who I'm coaching. And, uh, yeah, it's good to meet you guys for sure. Ryan Terry. So, my name is Ryan. I'm from Florida, from Tampa, Florida. And I've been playing for eight years. And my favorite cereal is Honey Bunches of Oats. Honey Bunches of Oats. All right, so Jen, you may remember this dude. So he was a part of the Funky Monkey, the second call that we did with the Funky Monkeys. So he was one of the kids that joined them when they went down to Space Coast. Um, he, yeah. He, they picked him up from Florida. So. Nice. And he's a Dolphins fan, too. So I'll forgive you. It's fine. No. Well, <laughs> I can tell you, you don't pull for Clemson. All right. Hey, watch your mouth. <laughs> All right, Micah. Um, my name is Micah Fudge. I'm from San Diego, California, and I play baseball and football, and I've been playing for nine years. Gotcha. Okay. Now, are you're not in San Diego right now, right? No, I'm in uh, Florida now. Okay. Now, coaches, I got a question to ask you. Um, Allie mentioned the team um, from the middle of the summer that was overseas playing. Um, th this is a different team, right? It is. This is not part of the USA baseball program. This mm -hmm. was just, this, this was a Caribbean uh, baseball organization tournament that they put on and they invited six different U S 12 U teams to play in the U S component of it. And then we were, we were crowned the U S a champion and they wanted all the teams to wear USA uh, apparel and that sort of thing. So when you got to the uh, international game, gotcha. Gotcha. Well, so you guys got to go overseas, right, and play? No, we played in Palm Beach. Oh, I thought you guys actually went to the Bahamas. That would have been cool. So Palm no, Beach. No, all those other countries came here. Ah. Okay. Well, now, now, is that something that – is this a tournament that happens regularly, like a yearly basis, or is this kind of a new thing? No, it's every year. This is the first year they've done 12U. They typically do the older age groups, 18 mm -hmm. uh, and open. Uh, this is the first year they did a 12 year. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Well, was it fun for you guys? Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. All right. So uh, here's here's where I'm just gonna start picking people. That's why I had to make sure I had your names right. But we're gonna ask some questions, okay? All right, Jen and Ali, make sure you're ready. So, um, my first question was about um. So you're, you're playing in this tournament. You're playing against all these other countries. How hard was it getting ready for this and and then going up against all of these pitchers and these batters that you're not familiar with? Because generally, if you're playing travel in your area, like you sort of know everyone. So how was it playing in this tournament? Was it hard? No. 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 Mm -hmm. Not no. really. Like, until we got there. Until we got to Bahamas. Until we got to Bahamas. 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 No, that semifinal for USA, that got a little out of hand. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that kid wasn't even throwing hard. He just did not hit. I very. know. And every time he would throw up, he'd be like right at someone. Mm -hmm. He was throwing 40 pit. Literally. 40, wait a <laughs> minute. He, he, a pitcher that you guys were playing was throwing 42? No. no, no, no I'm no. like 55, 55. Okay. Most of well, us are used to seeing like 80 and 75. What? At 12 80? years old? So yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. that Bahamas picture. In the Bahamas, we we faced like 82. That, for, that first oh, wow. picture? That first no, 82. 82. That first picture like 83. 79, 80. But we, we knocked him out after 80. two innings. All right. Yeah. So I mean, I'm going to ask one person and I'll, let's see who I think is going to answer this one the coolest. So, Michael, you faced 82 miles an hour, you said, right? 
Oh, like 79. 79. Okay, that first 79. guy was like 73. All right. So now did you get a hit? Can you hit that? Um we don't we don't oh uh, I kept following we'll about, like, we don't the last... about the head. You want, you want you want me to change, change. Yeah, the I subject. Kept following, I kept following him off. Um but then like the last pitch, like the uh, last pitch was 82 to him and he just got caved. No, oh Archer was Archer's at that was crazy to lead off, bro. Yeah, I know. You went crazy, too, bro. The first pitch was a line drive for me. But, all right, all right, Cooper. Tell me the story now. So you said it, that game that game got a little out of hand. What do you mean by that? Well, which one? The USA the semifinal. One? Which one was the craziest? He said it was the semifinal. One, the second uh, one. The semifinal. Okay. The second. The semifinal should not have ended how it ended. Well, tell we me what happened. It all runs up. Well, we kept like going out in front and reaching at a slow pitcher. Mm-hmm. And we kept like rolling over every ball. And then we'd like have an approach and we'd change it. And then we'd stay in our legs more. And then we'd barrel the baseball up. And then it'd be right at people. But then we drew some walks and got some runs in. And then it came to the last inning. And we uh, ended up scoring one run off a pass or something. It was a balk. It was a balk. It was a balk. Yeah, second. I remember I was then, at bat. Was yeah, and then, uh, and then and then the ball came to second and then it was a pickoff move, but he kept going through. Bad throw to third base and he scored a tied up. And okay. then Michael gets to third base and draws a balk and we win. Very <laughs> nice. We were a state championship. We won 15-0. So that was By the win. The catcher on the USA team tripped one of our players. I know. Mm. Yeah. I have video of it too. What? What? What, what do you no, mean? We all do. We all do. Yeah. Michael. Michael, what you talking about? So now, tell which team was this now? That was the semifinal of the USA. Okay, and he so did what? When, when uh, they they overthrew it to third, and we got that tie run. Mm-hmm. The catcher went over and tripped him. Like when he was running, when he so stuck like his they foot yeah, right they, out. They, yeah. they were both they were both running home, and then he stuck his foot out. Not really, because the catcher knew he was gonna score, so he just stuck his leg out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. The umpire. I mean, he seemed apologetic yeah. about uh, it after. Umpire was like, we all have it. video of it though. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Well, I mean, you ask you a question. You guys don't ever watch the video, though, right? No, I do. We watch it all the time. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Whenever I need to find something to be mad at, just to like get in, like hyped up and stuff, I watch that video. All right, mm-hmm. that, that's a good one for just everyone. For for the rest of you guys that watch it and probably get mad, don't get that mad. Like you probably need to delete it because that's that's what's happened. Has happened. Can't do anything about it. Move forward. But yeah. but Cooper, I get it. You want to watch something that gets you a little angry? I, I get it. You need some <laughs> extra motivation in the gym. I watched. I watched striking out because I wasn't the person that got tripped. So it doesn't. I watched me. Fortnite clips. Okay, right. <laughs> so, I'm diamond one. I still get get clipped though. All right, Jen. I'm actually pretty good. I'm a good bronze one. Bronze one. I think right, we're talking about. about I was too good. I'm I too think good. The, I think this Fortnite? is a Fortnite call. I think. Let's talk about baseball, bro. Diamond <laughs> one, seventeen percent. Cooper, well, I mean. Cute. Listen, we can all talk Fortnite, and this can just turn into a Fortnite call. But unfortunately, Jen, myself, and I'm pretty sure Allie, we don't know a lot about Fortnite. So and the coaches, uh, we can I don't think in. know a whole lot. <laughs> I, I no, didn't want to exclude them. John plays Fortnite. They, they had to hang out with these kids, so I'm sure they learned a lot of cool stuff. All right. You know what we did? You know what we did during travel ball when we were like doing in between games and stuff. We had we didn't have video games. We would get in the elevator and hit all the buttons we do stuff like that and then we'd crank call each other's rooms when there was actually telephones in the rooms that's what we did for fun <laughs> oh, ding dong ditch ding dong ditch yes yes a in, lot. The, in the slides though okay in the slides, <laughs> in the slides. <laughs> whenever i'm in my slides i break them because i run and then i trip and they bend backwards and break you gotta get your parents crops. are not very happy about that yeah well, the, I put the them in key cooper is you got to pick your feet up when you run then you can't yeah. anyone trip over them. Yeah. Birdies don't wear any shoes. I just go socks. <laughs> yeah. Socks, socks, and crocs. And you're the reason why your mom probably socks has to buy crocs. socks, new, new socks yeah. for you every month because they have holes in them. My sock right now. <laughs> yeah. Let me see the bottoms of them, Micah. 
Oh what? My God. <laughs> He's well, show. I'm wearing, I'm wearing like, Christmas, what? like the fuzzy Christmas like, socks. Well, Let's see, Cooper. Right oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Fuzzy Christmas socks. There's Cooper's what? Christmas socks. Yeah. Samuel well, in the socks. Right At that point, you no, just I'm don't even need school, socks. What? What? The Cooper, thank you for showing us those. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, she Jen. Asked. What questions do you have for these dudes? Oh, man. How do I even narrow it down? Um, I guess we can go with the old generic "why baseball." Yeah. Let's start baseball. with Sammy. Sammy hasn't said a whole lot. Um, what do you I, like about baseball, it? So I love how like the thrill of in between of all the games and being around friends. That is the number one answer right there that we get. As I like to be around my friends, love it. What about Ryan? Like to hit swamp donkeys, you know. <laughs> I don't. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you did the tournament. Just saying. I, you, what, you like to do what? Catch swamp, I like swamp donkeys. I like to hit bombs. <laughs> swamp donkeys. Is that what but he said? I like to catch. He likes like to hit catch. home. I'm translating into like old people terms, but I think he said he hit a home run and throw people out. Yeah. All right. What yeah. was that first word that you used? Something about Swamp a donkey. Donkeys. Swamp donkeys. Swamp, Swamp donkeys. donkeys. It it means like it means like bombs. I know what a bomb is, and I know what a dinger is, and yeah, probably so like a, a swamp donkey is like a bomb, like a nuke. Allie, yeah. you're you're a lot more active with the kids these days. Have you heard of swamp donkeys? Well, we don't have <laughs> swamps in California, so <laughs> I'm picturing like it's maybe Space Coast Stadium with the. The, the ponds behind and the alligator signs walking around Florida, but uh, that's not a SoCal term, but I'll take it. Swamp donkeys. Swamp sounds like donkeys. something, if you had that on a shirt, it sounds like they'd send you home for that or something. I don't know. Yeah. I just picture yeah. like a so, dad going through the swamp in the back of the field trying to find his son's home run ball and it's <laughs> not, you know, alligators coming out of, out of nowhere and you're not getting that home run ball back. That's no, what I picture the swamp donkey I, ball. It's like Happy Gilmore. There was a team in one of our tournaments named Swamp Donkeys. Really? Oh, did they hit a is lot that of where the donkeys? name came from? We didn't play against them. Oh, they they must have got Swamp taken donkeys. out before they got to you. Have then. you heard of Dingers Elite? Oh yeah, yeah. They sure. play some tournaments up by us. Okay. There's a big facility like two minutes from our house, and it's like absolutely huge. It's got like nine outdoor fields, two in inside fields, and inside basketball courts. Wow. And like somewhere. I need to find out where that is. All right, Micah. Place. Hold on one sec. At Micah. Yes. My baseball. Um, I just feel like baseball, like the connections, like I feel like you no know like it's almost like football. They you get brothers out of it and like you make amazing memories and like I don't know, it's just fun and like I don't know, I just love everything about it. All right, here, I got a question for you. Literally. Jen, yeah. this is, I asked this on uh, some of the other calls, but Micah, you've yes. been playing for nine years, right? Yeah. Two years ago in June, June, let's just say you played a game on June 1st or June 2nd. What was the score of that game? <laughs> Do you remember the score of any of those games in that, that season two years ago? Um. So I'll, that would be 11 you. I remember one game. It was in it was in California. It was like a PG tournament in Arizona with my uh, California team. Mm -hmm. It was a championship. We won one to zero in extra innings. That was probably one of the funnest. Oh games wow! Ever. Yeah. Well, I, well, obviously that that score was definitely attached to that memory. But the yeah. reason I asked that question is, you know, we get so upset about winning and losing right now at your age. And when in reality, the things that you're going to remember the most are your friends that you've got to spend time with and not those scores. So yeah. That's like my message for the day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who we got left here? Everybody switched around on me. Uh, Cooper, why yeah. baseball? Um, It's baseball. It was like the first sport I played. And I was like, pretty good at it. I was like I played soccer too and I was like really good at soccer. But mm -hmm. every time I keep playing soccer I'd like just I wouldn't have as much fun with it as I would when I started playing baseball. So when I was seven I stopped playing soccer 
And I started like really taking baseball serious and working out and stuff. And it just felt like baseball was more fun. And it seemed like it was just like more of the sport that I wanted to do. Very cool. Very cool. Michael, what about you, um, dude? Oh, uh, I started baseball. But then I, I still play football. So in between when I'm not in playing baseball, I would play football. But then when I was not playing football, I would play baseball. Um, but baseball was really my first sport and I loved the game. Um, and I kept playing on it. I mean, I kept playing baseball and then, oh yeah. Gotcha. Michael Devereaux, why baseball? Yeah. So the main reason I play baseball is because of my dad and he really, uh, brought me to the sport. And ever since like, even like eight you, I've just fallen in love with the game. And all the people I met playing it and all the memories I made, it's just so fun. Now, do you play any you do you play any other sports? I want to, but I've been so busy with baseball. I've played other sports, but not now. <laughs> play basketball and That's all right. Hey, oh, look, hey, always make time for other sports, man. That's what will make you a full, well rounded athlete. So all right. Let's try it. Jen, I learn stuff on this show. I, I definitely learn and I pay attention. Well, we've we've definitely learned about some swamp donkeys. We, we Is that what it was out. called? Is that right? Swamp donkeys. Swamp donkeys. Yeah. Hey, that could be a new banana ball team. Yeah. The party animals, the Savannah bananas, and the swamp donkeys. Yeah. That would be fun. You got to make that happen. <laughs> I was watching Savannah bananas earlier today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Watching it on TikTok? Yep. Man, I, I still hadn't figured out TikTok, man. That's that's a hard one for me. Fine. She get eight followers. <laughs> All right, Allie, what question you got for these dudes? So, uh, who's the social media star on the squad? Micah. Yeah, Micah, Micah, Micah. Micah, Micah. Micah, Micah. Micah are you uh, mic'd up during games going around interviewing your teammates or are you catching them dancing in the middle of nowhere? What, what's the scoop here? I'm yeah. more... Like, I'm the dancer type of person. Me and, like, more of thirst like, trap. No. Yeah, like, he's me. he's the thirst trap. He's the hottie. He's the team hottie. Oh, oh. Who Lord. is? Micah. Micah. This Aww. person has TikTok too. And Dude, says, you look like a young like, Aaron Judge. Like, pull it up real quick. I could see you. 78K views on that, bro. What? <laughs> You're looking good. You're looking too. good. Hold on, Cody Bellinger it. look. Well, like, so... Let me see how many followers I got right now. I got like, what well, I got like around. Yeah. 1, Hold on, I didn't hear how many he said. How many I got like what I got banned at like uh, I had twelve thousand followers, but now I have one thousand five hundred. How'd you get banned? Because like TikTok, you have to be thirteen. So if they think you're not thirteen, they just ban you. No, I got banned. Oh, like, that's you have stinks. to be thirteen to have it, and you have to be sixteen to actually get in the for you page and have other people see you on there. Yeah. I post like baseball, football, like dances. Um, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I li- I'll show you one of the videos. Oh, Sammy, man, I, saw you that. I saw that, Sammy. <laughs> let me let me tell you something. You know what they're trying to. You know what they're trying to do. This is this is another one of my messages. You know what they're trying to do by giving you those ages where you have to wait. I think. Actually, I don't believe this to be true. I think this, this would be my definition. It's because you need to be outside doing something. Like, you need to be playing. Who is that? That's Micah. Okay. That's Micah. <laughs> Wait, that's Dude, oh, is, your, is your nose taped down? No. Oh, that's the play button. That's the play button. I thought you had tape on your face. Look at that. 37K. 37K. <laughs> Man, kids are fun. Like a- no, I post like, uh, I don't just post like weird stuff, bro. That's just like catching me off guard. All right, so do you have the team's best drip too? Because Cooper just showed the eye black look right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, beat you? Oh, oh look I, at him! I think I've no, seen I that picture. I got drip. Wait, what is this Same. though? What is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now we're just be yourself. Oh man. 
no, no, but like, all right, tell here. us what your drip is. So, like, my last, my best drip is breast cancer awareness. So I take like football, oh my, bands, put them around my uh, arms. So, uh -huh. like, so like almost leg bands, I put them on my arms, and then a pink, uh, pink arm sleeve, eye black, and always gotta have the pants above the knees, and then Oakleys usually. And then, like, sliding mitts and a leg guard and elbow guard. Mm, a sliding that... mitt should be outlawed. Sliding mitt. Oh, my so gosh. Which coach is at first base holding all the, the Evo shields, the yeah. leg guards, yeah. arm guards? Uh -huh. I think good. I got the best sliding mitt. Like, <laughs> Sammy does have a good sliding mitt. Him or I Cole? I think have a good one. <laughs> no, Dude, it's, it's Sammy. Sammy with his used sliding mitt. Y'all don't look like Sammy with his used sliding mitt. Hold on. Hold Where on. is Cam? Yeah, Cam. Cam dipped. Y'all look like you're about to take a cake out of the oven with those things. I know. I I have a uh, <laughs> I have a baking mitt that looks just like it. I mean, Me too. But I, today, uh, I just got a baking mitt. Let's ask. Let's ask the coaches. Our drip. <laughs> yeah, coaches. I, I'm sure you're familiar with the term drip. Um, do do you either one of you two have some drip? Uh, Mike probably has more drip than I do. That's for look sure. Look at that. Hey, no, no, pants. As far as the, as far as that oven mitt, I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm just like, oh, please. I, this mitt is just not happening. It's not happening. I know. Yeah. They all have it. Evo, you have to have drip. You're playing center field in the MLB. But even the teams that lose have drip, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's is why it, they lose it, though. It, it's, drip over skill. it's drip over skill. It does. Oh, for well, the other team. <laughs> it just comes right off. So, so the it other off. team, it, they think it's drip over. Uh, well, what did you say, Micah? Drip, drip over, over skill. All right, I got That's you. my sliding mitt. Yeah. Oh, now I like their sliding mitts. Now, listen. Aria. I, I, Aria. But, but if you go pay $80 for this like special edition sliding mitt that aria has absolutely ridiculous do you really want to get it dirty of course like yeah, i, I think you should you like safe. hang that thing up and look at it i mean like, i couldn't really it buy it off of aria Dan Dan has, has, i buy it off Dan of has that. it's just <laughs> like it's just I've like you're more drippy if your jersey is it's so oh tiny though gosh. it's like this big hey you one of like the, it? one of these days you guys are going to realize that that drip is just all up in your head so and, and Michael, Michael Devereaux, I'm sure your dad's drip is all of his knowledge that he oh, gets yeah. to teach you. You look good. You play good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, I've seen some you. dudes that are straight, like all decked out coming up to the plate and it looked like they didn't know how to swing a bat. So. Hey, look, Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is all dripped out. Mm -hmm. and he's MVP but, but how long yeah. has he been playing? Mookie Betts? He's been playing for long, like 15 long time. I'm that better drip at bowling didn't get into him. the MLB though. All right, Michael. Let, let's. I want to, Michael. I want to hear about, um, like the advice that Dad gives you, and what's that? What's that like? So basically, most of, most of the time, he just tells me to like be confident and that you're the best one up there. So like, if you're up to bat, you're like, oh, I'm better than this pitcher. I dare you to throw me a strike. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, what kind of pitches do you normally see? Especially in these big tournaments, like what kind of? Most of the time, I see like fastballs and curveballs, sometimes sliders. Gotcha. And what's the hardest pitch to hit? Uh, it depends. It's like what what pitcher if they throw like eighty. Mm -hmm. They throw good. That's the thing. A nasty curveball. Gotcha. So if you throw an eighty, you want to hit the curveball because the curveball's slower. Uh huh. Yep. Sometimes I like knuckleballs though, because sometimes they don't move; they just hang. Yeah, it's cool. Do you it's see a lot of knuckleballs? Sometimes like, my friend throws a knuckleball, and he's hung yeah, up the front. I took him the elbow, but like this whole time. I heard a lot of people. Nasty, I heard a lot of people telling me something, but um, Cooper, you said you do see a lot of knuckleballs. Well, sometimes, but I've seen it a time before in game, and I didn't know it was a knuckleball because I couldn't see it in the sun. And I thought it was a fastball, so I swung anyway, and I hit it off the fence. And then I have my friend who throws a pretty good one. Sometimes you get lucky, and I got lucky once. It was able to hit a single. But usually it's crazy. It's so hard to hit. It depends but, on who does it, though. 
I, and then according to Micah, it depends on what kind of drip you got on too. Apparently, yeah. I mean, he's got talking. extra drip. You're already yeah. too scared of, of him. Gotcha. Like cool knuckleballs. If the knuckleball is not good, it just looks like a like a nephus. But if oh, the knuckleball is really hard to hit, yeah. Like a, Allie, is there a lot of pitchers in MLB today throwing uh, knuckleballs? No, I think it's a lost art. Uh, I remember Charlie Huff back in the day. He <laughs> threw a knuckleball. Um, I don't remember a lot that really threw knuckles. Um, what about you, coaches? You guys in in your day, did you see uh, a lot of knuckleballs? And what what do you normally see these kids throwing today? Well, Wake, Wakefield threw a knuckleball. He was That's very right, good knuckleball Wakefield. pitcher. Yes, uh, yes, he just passed away unfortunately, and he's yes, from he Central Florida. Uh, Negro, uh, very good knuckleball as well. Yep. Yeah, and I was a pitcher, so I didn't throw one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know Mr. Devereaux. Um, I'm just going to call you Mr. Devereaux, and then I'm going to call your son Michael, so we don't get you guys confused. Right. But uh, what did you see in your playing career? Well, um, Wakefield was the main knuckleball pitcher that I saw, and when you when you face a guy like that. Um, it's pretty much you just forgot about that day. You always look for the knuckleball, and if you throw a fastball, you just weren't going to hit it because right. you always hit the ball because he threw like 80% knuckleball. Yeah. And then what you did, whether you're 0 for 4, 3 for 4, you know, you just say, okay, there's that day. Uh, whatever happens, if I'm 0 for 4, I can't, I can't harp on that. And I just, just had it. But he was, he was a nasty pitcher. He had a nice knuckleball. Yeah. I, I, I I remember watching him a lot. I was a big Conseco fan growing up. So um, I, there's probably some people that boo me just for being a fan. But uh, <laughs> like that, that was my dude when I was growing up. And man, he used, I remember he used to get eat up by him. So that Charlie Huff, I, I remember he was, I think he was White Sox. Um, and man, he it was just, it was terrible. Anyway. Wait, so if he was on the White Sox, didn't Coach play with him? Uh, I don't, I don't know. It may not have been his time. Yeah, oh. I only played a few months with the White Sox. Gotcha. Oh. So Ryan Terry. All right. Yeah. So some of these dudes are from like all over the country. What's yeah. It like, what's it like coming together? Because now you've done this before with the Funky Monkeys, but uh -huh. now, like, now you're doing it again. Like, do you like this? Like, like the Avengers? Yeah, I think it's emblem? like, I think it's fun to meet new people and like to see how they play and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know like a lot of kids on this team because I've played with them in past tournaments. But like, it's just fun meeting new people and playing baseball. Yeah. Okay. Sammy, what about you? What was it like getting to know some of these new dudes? Um, at first, I didn't really talk to them. So over like the tournament, I get to know them more, mm -hmm. and now we're we're like best friends. Was it was you nervous like getting ready to go meet all these guys? I mean, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Now, Micah, did you know everyone beforehand? Um, not really. Like, so my first tournament with Arsenal was about probably five months ago, and that's like. I was the national team, so mm -hmm. that's when I started knowing people. But, like, like the crazy thing was, like, you go from, like, just not even knowing these kids from, like, staying staying with them in Cooperstown, like, staying in the same rooms with them. I feel like baseball is, like, a cr crazy like that because you can go from not knowing somebody from staying with them. So, yeah. I feel like it, it's crazy how you can do that. Well, I can tell you, and I'm sure Jen and Allie can, you know, set, share similar things, but – like some of my best friends growing up, like that's how I met them on the baseball field. So, all right, Allie, what do you got? I want to know who throws the hardest. Who throws gas here? Mm. Nope, nope, no, no, no. Me or Cooper? Is he the guy? Cooper or Micah? I throw yeah, absolute Micah meatballs. All right, how fast <laughs> are you throwing, Micah? Uh, I topped out so. I've topped out at like 72, 73. Mm -hmm. Cooper, how fast are you throwing? Top out at 70, live at 68, 67. All right. So the new generation is all about throw hard, right? As hard as you can. 
throw gas and hit bombs. Who's your home run hitter? Sammy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sammy. 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 Yellow Crocs. The Yellow quiet Crocs. One? <laughs> what? I have 44 home runs. What? 44? Already. You're talking he about like in three this weekend. Oh, he's talking about on MLB the show. He's got 44 home runs on MLB the show. Yeah. The video game. No, no, no. <laughs> in real life, you've hit 44 home runs. Yeah. Over the fence. Mm-hmm. What kind of bat are you yeah, swinging? Donkeys. Uh, I use I use a 2022 Meta and a High Fire. Okay. That's, that's I, some I hit one off of Micah last weekend. Shit. <laughs> 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 slam. Oh, yes. Let's go. That was my Mike. worst. Mike, what, was, what was the count, Micah, when he hit that grand slam? What was the pitch count? Oh, well. oh yeah. first pitch. First swinging. pitch. What were you looking was, for on that first pitch when you stepped in the box against him? I was actually what? expecting a curveball because they, they know how, how I hit I wasn't throwing tricks. That's why I didn't throw the curveball. That's how I got the bases loaded. I walked four kids, or I walked three kids. So I was just trying to throw strikes. He threw me a fastball like low in the zone. I just knocked it the other way. Yeah. Oh, opposite field. Mike, it's all right. It's okay. Like, you're hey, going you're gonna to give up some. I can't do nothing about it. It happens. It's all good. All right. So, Sammy, do you do you have a, a bat flip that you're proud of or a home run? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't do any bat flips. I'm the bat flipper kid. Mm-hmm. I, I would have voted. Your dad that. Sold it, though. I what? Would have voted. Your dad sold it. Was it a big one? Oh yeah, the ball went like two fifty, probably. No what? bat flip was it hot. Yes, it hit the palm tree. If it didn't hit the palm tree, <laughs> it didn't keep going. Like <laughs> All right, Sammy. Look, you said something that I like. Is you don't do the bat flips. You don't do nothing the special no. stuff. I love that, no. dude. Hey, stay that way. That'll keep. That'll keep you. Always hitting home runs on the micas of the world. <laughs> I, 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 I used to do bat flips, but then I realized that it was, it was pretty disrespectful to the other pitcher. Yeah. And so, so I stopped doing it. I like You it. got tired of it because you hit so many? <laughs> he, he, he was probably breaking the bats as he was flipping them the way that everybody does. You got to be careful when you get older. If you have like a two piece, it could telescope the bat and break it. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're getting into safety tips of bat flipping here. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Coach you John. Safety of- yes, sir. I got a question for you. So you, I, I know you got some rock stars on the mound and we were just talking pitching. So some of these kids are hitting 70s, 72s. How do you take care of their arm? And what would you recommend for coaches and parents out there listening? Because again, like Ali said, it's about what's what's the fastest you can throw? What's the fastest you can throw? How do we help kids take care of their bodies? That's a really good question. And since I've gone through surgeries myself as an ex-pitcher, I know that it's very important to arm care is more than just counting pitches. It's preparation, it's throwing, it's proper mechanics. This kid that we faced from the Bahamas was throwing 80 to 83, uh, which is just phenomenal when you think about it, particularly when it's 50 feet. That's not 60 feet, six inches. That's 50 feet. Uh, The one thing that scares me about most of these kids, because these are national players that you're talking to today. Mm -hmm. So they play on lots of different teams. We just happen to be one of them that they play sometimes. And some coaches really don't pay a lot of attention to pitch count and what they did last week, how many pitches they might have thrown. Was it an intense situation or was it loose and relaxed? There's a lot that goes into it. So when a kid shows up with me, like we did for that particular tournament, I ask each one of them, when did you pitch last? How many pitches did you throw? What was the game like? What was the score? Uh, What was the most pitches you threw in any one inning? And have you thrown in a bullpen since? All of that information, I then process to see how much I can use them that particular weekend. I wish more people thought like that as former pitchers, but we get – we get too wrapped up in trying to win a tournament this weekend that we forget that they can't go an inning on Friday, three innings on Saturday, and then five innings on Sunday. They can't do that at any age, but that's one of the reasons why we have so many surgeries with 17, 18 and 19 year olds today is because 
not that they're throwing too much, they're pitching too much and not taking care of the things that they should be. Yeah. Well, I think Allie, you've pointed it out before, you know, some pitchers, one, once they're pulled out of the game, they're going to fill in in other positions. And, you know, if it happens to be catcher, you're going to be throwing the ball as much as the pitcher is. And, well, in most cases. Well, don't forget if you're playing shortstop and you're playing an outfield position too, oh, you yeah. got to come up with, you got to come up and make that big throw Rifles. after you yeah. just pitched 85 pitches and you rest it for an inning or two. That's hard to do. And that's really tough on your body and arm. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, we've had a few kids on that's had Tommy John already um, before their college years. So, I mean, that's, let me, let me ask you guys a question. So coach John just said something that was very important about you guys taking care of your body and, you know, taking care of your arm more importantly. How much do you guys think about that as you are practicing every day or you're playing with multiple teams is, is what coach John just said something that you're thinking about? A lot. Uh, I have that. Arm. I'm sorry. What was that? Cooper, oh, you were saying um, something? So, like, Cooper, I do your, hey. the baseball armory for my arm thing. So, that everything that I do arm care is all run through an app. And, like, everything arm care that I need to be working on or doing or even, like, just thinking about is on one app and in one binder. So, all my workouts, everything I knew, need to do to make sure my arm is fully recovered, I go to there and I have – Recur workouts, stretches, mobility stuff, all right there to do each day. Awesome. Hey, do me a favor, adjust your camera, um, pull it down a little bit. Perfect. Now, what's the name of that app? Um, it's Conduct Athlete. Conduct Athlete. And so, okay. like, they set up an account and you sign in and it works. So, like, sometimes it doesn't load. Oh, it's but... okay. That's okay. So, well, that's I have cool. everything I need to do for this day. Uh, in the days ahead. Do you, do you guys ever have a true off season? Like really true off season where you're no. just not no. doing anything? Okay. No. If it's not baseball, it's a different sport. Yeah. If, and that's okay. If baseball, I mean, if well, baseball is emotions. over, if baseball is over for me, then I'll switch to football because I play both sports like, like in June, I stopped playing uh, baseball, then I switch to football, then to November, and then baseball starts again, so then I go back to baseball. Wow. If I'm not throwing a baseball, I'm throwing a football. Well, you know, there's different motions to both, so I mean, yeah. and I think as long as you're balancing out, I mean, you got to be mindful of what you put your body through if you just threw a complete game, but um, you just got to be mindful. Um, Jen, you, like, is that what you were thinking like it's okay yeah i mean it's a different sport a different sport i mean you truly um hopefully you guys are taking vacations and stuff i mean i know baseball's fun and football's fun but yeah baseball is a vacation it, yeah it is a vacation i like <laughs> yeah. that i like it yeah Go i understand what you're saying vacation um, so i've treated i've treated athletes who were you know only football and only baseball and there's um there's injuries associated with both so i'm glad to hear that some of you are playing different sports that's awesome yeah because i mean at your age who knows what you're going to end up doing your body's probably going to change a, a lot more before you're ready to make that kind of decision john were you going to say something yeah i, I was uh, yeah. um little davo just said something that's really important when he says vacation is baseball that's one of the things that we do as arsenal national we don't play that many tournaments and what we do is we pick a spot to go to like Cooperstown, for example, we went up there for a week and we turned it into a full family uh, and it's a vacation kind of thing where we do lots of things together and have fun. It's not about winning the tournament. It's about the experience of having doing that. And the same thing when we went to Palm Beach last week, while, yeah, winning a tournament would be fun. That's not the goal of what we do. The goal of what we do is for Mike and I to help hyphen their level of the nuances of how you play baseball at a higher level and yet have a whole family experience that's fun. And so that's why we pick locations like Atlanta for East Cobb and Houston. And uh, yeah. we're going to the Dominican Republic this summer with an oh, academy wow. down there for a week. These are really vacations that happen to be centralized with baseball. Um, can I play? I, I can get a birth certificate <laughs> made and go to the DR with you, but you know, 
<laughs> well, you'd have to go to DR first. They will make a birth certificate any age you want. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Awesome. Well, that's cool. Like we'll we'll definitely have to talk about Cooperstown though, because I know that was fun. But uh Mr. Devereaux, Michael, what position you play, man? With me? Yeah, you. Oh, I play left field and first base. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, left field and first base. Okay. Um <laughs> Oh Mike. me? Yeah, you little know. Michael as well. Uh, so I'll play center field, first base, and pitcher. What's your favorite? Probably if we're playing a good team, then center field. That's where you're that's where you feel like is your strongest suit if you're playing on a comp highly competitive team. Yeah. I'll Mostly because of him. Oh yeah? What what is he what has he taught you? To help you be a better center fielder, he's pretty much taught me everything he knows, and one of the main things he taught me is, like, get around the ball, and it's better to go out and then towards it, than to go towards it and then out. Right, gotcha. That's a that's a super important lesson for center field, especially. So, now, um, do you hit home runs? Uh, I've hit like fourteen. Fourteen. That's great. I, I love it. All right, Michael, at up top, how many how many uh, swamp donkeys have you hit? Oh, uh, maybe like three. Three. All right. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm not a. I'm more of a contact hitter instead of a power hitter. Like I mostly hit line drives or ground balls in the gaps. Well, well if you perfect. hit line drives, home runs will come. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Look, as long as you're hitting line drives, you'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah. Um, Terry. Yeah. You hit any bombs this year? I've had two. No, two. three. Yeah, three. Cooper, do you do you hit two? Oh, uh, yeah, I hit. Um, This year, I only hit them off the wall, but in the past years, I've had a good amount. Um, Micah, let me guess. Yes. You're just rolling around in all the balls that you've hit, all these home runs, right? I fit 39. This season? No. Oh. That's his career. It's his career stats. Sammy, yeah. is that true? Uh, yes. I, so I figured you would tell me the truth. Wow. You may, let me tell you how many I hit. Like 500. Look at Jen. Jen, you're spoiling it. I have never <laughs> hit a home run in my life. Now, I played mm -hmm. I played on some pretty big fields. But see, I played when I was growing up. We didn't have fences. I'm not even <laughs> joking. Jen, don't sit there and laugh like that. I was wondering if you had electricity. Like, did y'all have to go home at dark? Cause... Oh, that's messed up. Well, well we did. We, when the, when the street <laughs> it was dinner time. <laughs> yeah, it was dinner time. <laughs> Micah, don't be over there laughing like that. Uh, look, oh, I didn't. I never hit a home run. So it is so cool to hear you guys like talk about it. Now, have have you guys saved every one of the balls that you've hit as home runs, or is, do you did you save a special one? Oh, uh, I've saved almost all of mine. A couple. I, don't I, think... I fit like two. In, I fit like three in the pond, like pond. So those I didn't get back. Dude. If, yeah, if, listen, I've never hit a home run, but if I hit one in a pond, I'm going scuba diving because we're going to pull <laughs> that ball out. Gators. gators will get you. You got to be careful. Well, there was one ball that I like really keep and like I like to keep nice because mm -hmm. it was, I don't even remember what it was, but it was like a game winning grand slam, grand slam or get no, get an 8U state championship grand um, semifinal um, against our rival team and you're down the entire game and at the grand center tie it. And then we walk it off right after that, that ball. I like to keep nice. That's, that's a story. That's the stuff that matters right there. Like, and I know every one of you guys have that. And like, that's the part about baseball that makes it so special to us. And Jen, you call it the ultimate unifier. Um, and, uh, like, there's so many lessons to be learned out on that baseball field. And I'm sure both these coaches would tell you like there there's 
life lessons that are learned out on those baseball fields. I think you guys are sitting on a gold mine with these two coaches right here. They're both so smart and have so many things to teach. Uh, learn all you can from Coach John and Coach Mike. All right, coaches, which one Which one do you have to tell more than once to do what they're supposed to be doing? Oh, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> Micah, get off TikTok. I'm going on TikTok. <laughs> all right. Mike, well, is, I, Mike is usually ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. He's the guy that's starting to think about the second game before you finish the first game. Oh, okay. Okay. He's way gonna- ahead of both of us. Like you said, Coach, got to get that last out before we celebrate. That's right. I'm calling guard balls. <laughs> Who's the dugout? That high- inning, though, Sammy. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, you were throwing gas that inning, Sammy. Uh, you don't, him don't speak I just throw a lot of curveballs. <laughs> hey, if Sammy would have thrown it a strike, it wouldn't have mattered. Sammy, you sold the clip by not throwing a strike. So, oh, if anything, um, Michael saved the clip out in center field, throwing the guy from out from center field, all the way to first base. Oh yeah, <laughs> you threw it. You threw someone out from the outfield at first base. Who did that? Michael. Yeah. Michael. Dudes, what well, you play center field, so you got to have a good arm. Like, there's no doubt you you've got to have a decent arm. But you threw a dude out from center field at first base. Had he already? Pass first, and then had to turn around, and you got him then. No, he thought he was oh. gonna be safe. Of course. Do what now? He thought he was gonna be safe, so he slowed down. And Michael has a cannon, so he got him out. Mm-hmm. So the dude got lazy running the first. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't. He was also. He wasn't that fast. Yeah, so like, big, big boy. Yeah. He's fast. Look, I don't care. I'm fast. I hit a triple. I hit a triple. I know he had like two triples. No, I had a triple and a double. I mean, the skills are like 300. I was just hitting it past them. So, all right. So, walk me back to this play, though, dude. Like, now, when you threw him out, was that the third out of the inning? Yeah. I just, yeah, in my head, so. that's how I imagined it. That was like the third I'm out. I'm pretty of the sure inning. it was the third out. Yeah, I think so. I kind of forgot. You know what? Yeah. I don't I don't believe in showboating or anything, but it, look, if you throw a kid out at first base because he got lazy running the first, you need to run over and just hand him the ball after. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> but I mean, now granted, they said you got a cannon. Uh, yeah. Did does somebody have a baby? It's Callie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, she's, what is that? She's right here. Gotcha. No, so you got definitely a, you, not a baby. So how do you build up your arm to be so strong, Michael? So basically what I do is I do long toss pretty much every day, almost. Mm-hmm. And then I make sure I stretch a lot before I throw so I don't hurt my arm. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um, Mr. Devereaux, what yes. advice would you give for kids out there that aren't pitchers that need to really like build up their strength and their ability to throw from the outfield. How do they do that safely? Well, I actually, I actually uh, learned from pitchers, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, I, when I was playing in the big leagues, you know, my early in my career, my arms would get sore and I learned from pitchers to, to throw long, you know, almost as far as you can but have a nice arc on it and then kind of bring it down as uh, as the other player comes in. And after I started doing that, my arm never got sore again. So okay. from that, you know, learning from what the pitchers did, you know, help my my arm and help my arm strength. And that's why I passed on to these guys. Gotcha. So what's a pregame, like, how do you get the kids warmed up before a game, Coach John? Like, what's that, that pregame? Pepper. 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 These kids can these kids can probably tell you by by memory. The first thing we we do is a dynamic uh, warm up. Uh, as most of you on the call probably already know, that dynamic is far better than a static. And so we're working full body by getting everybody moving. We then do some arm exercises with bands, uh, depending on who we have and where we are. And then we go. We have a throwing program that we do before every game. Gotcha. Okay. And the reason why I ask that is, you know, and I'm sure you guys see it just as much as we do, but there's a, there's a new travel ball team every day. 
and yeah. you know and i would say a lot of these coaches that are established in these new teams really don't have the pedigree that you guys do and you know and how to help kids because everyone you know if i if i get mad at this other coach i can just go start another travel ball team and i ain't got to worry about him anymore but the real question is do, do the coaches know how to take care of the players and so that's always important i think because sometimes egos get in the way and they don't want to ask for help and they very well should i agree 100 percent with you and we have unfortunately at the youngest levels of our sport i'm talking smaller field 12 and under we have too much of a football mentality instead of a baseball mentality. Oh, football, wow. you play with beast mode. Baseball, you play relaxed and stress-free. That's very good. I like that. How many times does he say that to you guys? Do you guys hear that a lot? Relax? Yeah, he says relax. Oh, yeah, he says relax. Yeah. And, like, relax, have fun, and play with confidence. Like yeah. when he calls time and he comes talk to, he comes to talk to the pitcher. He says like, like take a breath and stuff and take your time. He just sits he like, he tries to make you yeah. better than that batter. All right. Well, here here's a good question then. I think we got a couple pitchers here. What's a mound visit look like? What, what are you What are you hearing from the coach? Is he telling you? I don't know if you guys saw the clip of this dude, but he he comes out and he tells the pitcher, he's like, I sure hope you're embarrassed by this. And he just tells them all kind of this bad stuff. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. Is seen that, that is that is that Coach John? Is that what no, he's doing? He's, like, he comes no, out here. He's, he's the complete opposite. Yeah, he's he's like, like, hands on his knees. He's like, tell, uh, "Can you guys see the umpire?" We're like, yeah. Tell me when he tell me when he's coming. So he just sits out there, telling us to relax, and then we just wait there for a little while till the umpire comes out, and we're out there for a few minutes, <laughs> and then the umpire comes out, and then he leaves. I remember ah. like the first playing with Arsenal, I was pitching, and he said, like, what are we going to go eat after this? Just to relax you. If like, okay. just, like, 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 he that. just tries to make the game fun. Like, don't worry about, like, throwing, like, balls. Or say, like, he was talking to me about this last practice because I didn't have the best outing. He says, like, you can work on just, like, taking a breath. You don't throw a strike. You can take a breath off the mound, call time, and just relax. Yeah. I mean, as a pitcher, you're controlling the tempo of the game. Yeah. And you're not dealing with a pitch clock. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Speed. What's that? He says, like, work out of your own speed. There you go. There you go. Allie, you got any questions for these dudes? I got a question for the coaches. What's the hardest part about coaching a team like this that gets together where, like you said, you're not always focused on winning the entire tournament? It's about providing the opportunity for these boys to – grow in the game, develop in the game, and also have fun with their brothers on the field. So what's the challenge for you? I'll, I'll let Mike answer, and, and I'll go first. Uh, the challenge is to make sure I give all of them an equal opportunity to have success. Uh, one of the things we do is I rotate the batting order. While I don't want anybody to hit ninth all the time or 12th out of time, uh, everybody, everybody hits. I rotate the batting order through the entire tournament, or at least until we get to the championship game. Uh, and then it's based on quality of bats. So it's a function of making sure everybody has, for me, it's a, it's a function of making sure everybody has similar opportunities for success and then rewarding those that do have success in the championship game. Gotcha. Oh, he's muted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess. I I think there you I go. I guess um, the thing is, I always turn my mute off. I guess the thing is, is making sure that um, that the kids are confident within themselves. And, you know, all these kids, I mean, they, they it's really tough for these guys to, to deal with pressure at times and to understand mm -hmm. that, uh, that 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 it's going to happen. You're going to fail and, and uh, to help them. To, to deal with failing. And that's what this game is about is, is failing it. And you got to learn from your failures to get better. Yeah. I mean, you guys are playing a game and we have said this so many times that you're playing a game where if you only fail seven times out of 10, there's a high probability. If you're a batter, you might be wearing a gold jacket at the end. That's right. That's I mean, right. And, and that's it, but that's a lot of failure. Mm-hmm. 
Like, but what I heard earlier in the call when they were talking about the semifinal game, right? It shouldn't have been that way, but you, you guys came and won. You guys talked about fundamental baseball, how you got back to making adjustments, right? You stayed in your legs, you barreled the ball up, and even though it was hit right at people, you continued to use those adjustments in the game plan, and that's what got you the win on the game. You know, whether it was a balk, an error, pass ball, a single, a home run that wins you that game, it comes down to making those adjustments and playing the game of baseball, and for you guys to do it at such a young age, um, kudos to you coaches for teaching them that and continuing that. Um, but good work to you guys for being open and really working that process because that's not easy. Yeah. I mean, just like just talking about, you know, like there's teams that can have good innings and they can really like focus in, but the true teams can do it for nine innings or six innings or however long your games are. Is do you stay locked in that long? So, all right. So let's ask some questions about our coaches now. You guys ready? All right. Who is which one of these coaches is the meanest coach? They're not mean. They're, They're not, not mean. They're oh. not mean. None of them. None of them. Wow. Coach John's usually the meanest because I'm John. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the loudest coach? Um, but John. They're, They're not even loud. loud. Like, only if you yeah. like. Do they text yeah, you? Do they text you while you're in the outfield? Like, hey, you need to back up a little bit through a text message? <laughs> yeah, Coach John texts me that. The only time I see getting, he got loud Coach. is when we got the two outs in the last inning, and we gave up six runs, and he was mad because we kept, like, we didn't, we stopped, like, thinking the game was over with one out left, started celebrating too early. And he, so had, he had to talk about, like, never celebrate. The last out can be the hardest to get. So once you get the last out, we can then have the fun afterwards. That's right. Yeah, you just celebrate after. That's right. But, like, yeah. they're both not very loud coaches. No. And the last out is always the hardest to get. It yeah. depends what the situation is. But, like, he really says more. He talks, like, like say our game's over. He doesn't, like, he doesn't get mad. He just, like, tells us what we need to work on. Or he just talks, like, fundamental or whatever we need to work on. Yeah. Or what we got to do better the next game. Gotcha. Well, let me ask you this question. Outside of these two guys, like what what means the most to you as a player? What do you want the most from a coach? Like if a coach does this, they're your guy. Like wh what is it that a coach does? Anybody know? Yeah, I feel Micah. Like either like honesty with you, like they're honest. They don't like say like they don't lie. Like they're like they're straight up with you or they take their own time to work with you. I feel like coach John and coach, uh, uh, coach, uh, D De Devereaux, they both <laughs> I was going to say diva. I was going to say diva. That's my name. <laughs> they, both, they both take their time and like, they, like they, they're honest and they don't just be like, Oh, you got to do this real quick. They take the steps slowly and whatever you got to work on, they help you with. Also for me, Mm -hmm. My dad always told me the coaches that get on me, the coaches that get on you, or the coaches that care for you the most. Okay. Like if you had a coach that doesn't care about you, like they don't care if your swing is messed up. But like if you have a coach that does care about you, like they'll tell you like these little tips and tricks that'll help you make you better. Do you ever get frustrated though, because you feel like you've done you've done enough? And your coaches keep pushing you for more. Does that not get frustrating? Sometimes. Yeah. They're just trying to make you. They're just trying to make you better. Like I get mad. I get mad with my dad a lot about that stuff. So <laughs> I feel like he does my hitting stuff, and he runs a hitting uh, company. So I'm always like, "Isn't this good?" And I, it feels perfect. And he's always like, "No, it's not there yet." And then he's like, "One more ball," and I think it's good. And he's like, "No, nope, one more ball." And then we end up hitting for like an extra half hour. I I might know that technique. I might know that one. <laughs> See, I was that person where I'd be hitting, and I'm like, just throw me one more. And 50 pitches later, my BP thrower's like, come on, one more. Are you kidding me, Allie? <laughs> but Sammy. that shows that, like, you love the game, and that means you care. And, like, I feel like yeah. people that don't care about the game makes me mad because, like, it's, um, it's like you're just wasting your time here. And, like, I feel like when you waste your time at, like, I, I hate people that waste time on a baseball field. Especially a lot of money, too. Yeah. 
I'm glad and you guys realized you're wasting that. time at the baseball field. You're taking reps away from yourself and taking reps away from me. Yeah. From, yeah, and other people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I totally get it, dude. I completely agree with what you just said. And because it, it does take a lot of time. And that's the one thing in life that you'll never get back is time. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm having a bunch of like message moments tonight. <laughs> All right, Sammy, what do you like best about a coach? Um, if they're like, if you make a mistake, they're supportive and not like get on you. Okay. And like, even so, like they know the best, and so if they make a subtle adjustment that fix your whole technique, it it's um very meaningful. Gotcha. Okay, Ryan. What do you like most about coaches? Not the not specifically these two coaches, but what what matters most to you? I like a coach, like that's played baseball and not just like a dad coach because some dad coaches don't know what they're talking about, and they're like getting you worse at the game. With so you mean to tell me that everybody that coaches baseball don't know what they're talking about? Or no, not, like, ev not everybody. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, I said that incorrectly. But there are a lot of coaches that don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And the only reason they're coaching is because they're the dad. Money. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want money. They're not coaching for money. They're coaching because I feel like there's not that many bad coaches at this level. I feel like every coach out here at like the highest level, they're all good coaches. I feel like that's down. Like, I feel like majors, there's no bad coaches. Like nationally, there's no bad coaches. Gotcha. Okay. Well, there may be you, coaches that like. Have I you guys like heard of? You guys have heard of Daddy Ball, right? Yeah. 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 That's what that was sort of. That's where I was sort of going with that one. But you guys like put the brakes on that one for me. <laughs> but I get it, Jen. Any final questions for these dudes? I've heard a lot of talk about pitchers and outfield. I need to know who the catcher is. See me so. Emmy Ryan. Sammy Hilos. Is that your pressure? And Ryan. Um, so yeah. it it sounds like some utility players in the crowd. Who likes to catch? <laughs> Me. Oh, Who's that Me. main position? Main it's is my there like a main? Me. You I think it, Ryan, are you like figuring out if you want to raise your hand or not? Because I don't no, see it go up. I okay, there you go. <laughs> we need we need Ryan. it to be very high. There you go. It's a catcher's raise right there. That's <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I have never played the position. I didn't know. Sammy, then what's your main position? Huh? What's your main position? Catcher. All right. And Cooper, what's yours? What's your number um, one? Is it pitching? Pitcher shortstop. Not sure. I used to catch two, but then uh, my coach said it's too much throwing. So I have to choose one. And I was better at pitching at the time. So I kind of just stuck with it more. Okay. Cool. We've interviewed a lot of catchers, and they, they tend to be kind of a little bit cuckoo. So I was just curious who the cuckoo one was in the crowd. I'm, I'm kind of cuckoo. Right. Dot, uh, Ryan. Mike is a catcher, too. Who's I, cuckoo? I see that. Somebody's, who is cuckoo? Micah. Ryan. Micah did. Oh, Micah. Micah, the, the TikTok boy. The TikTok <laughs> boy. <laughs> oh, I don't just play catcher. I play every position besides, like, first. That's, like, the only position I don't play. What you got against first? I just feel like first – I feel like you have to be a lefty to play first base. Are you sure? Like, I play first. I don't think I'm short. Play first. I'm a righty. Like, I feel like the best lefties are first – or le like the best first basemen are lefties. Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman. Fre Fre He's entitled to his opinion. It's okay. Yeah. Or it's like, all right if you feel that way. <laughs> or you got to be like – you got to be really tall. Micah, you're playing first base this weekend. <laughs> well, I, 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 that's what i love to hear coach you can ask coach john i'm not that bad at first base i didn't i just feel like uh i'm not you just gotta be able to scoot the ball can you scoot pretty good you're pretty good at catching yeah i'm, I'm good uh, yeah yeah he yeah. likes scooping like, well see huh? imagine imagine talking to a baseball recruiter and you telling them well i played everything but first because the first thing that recruiter is going to say well Tell me why not first. So being able, like John said, like, hey, you're playing first this weekend. That way, it, once you build your skill sets at each one of these positions, you got everything for that recruiter. Like, dude, put me in any position. 
I'll be there for you. Yeah, I could play first. If Coach Dom plays me at first, I can play first. I think my favorite quote from one of my coaches, uh, college coach Tariah Flowers, she played for the U.S. Olympic national fast pitch team, um, UCLA All-American. And she said, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So in Division One college softball, our second base, shortstop, and third baseman rotated every inning. Our left center, our left field, our center field, and right fielder, they would rotate every inning. And it's because, one, we were utility players, yes, but two, she didn't want us to think, oh, I have this spot, I don't have to keep working. It was the next person is right on your heels. Everyone is there. They understand the game from any part of that diamond, and they're ready to go. So uh, I think my favorite thing is when people are like, oh, I can't play second base, but you're a shortstop. Like, you can do it. It's the same game. You just got to do it, essentially. So, yeah. Micah, I look forward to hearing how the challenge is at first base this weekend. Because yeah. I, I can promise you I'm going to follow up. Like, one tournament, like my second tournament I've ever played with Arsenal, Coach John put me at every single position. Um, and, like, no coach has ever did that to me. Um, and, like, if I felt – like it felt uncomfortable, but then it got comfortable again. Like yeah. how, like I would keep doing positions over and over again. So I got like comfortable doing all of the positions that I've done that I did. Look, you guys are way too young to ever understand what comfortable means. Like I can promise you, I'm I'm 45, and I'm sure your coaches would agree. Is they're still waiting for everything to get comfortable as well. Like life. Life is a bunch of curveballs, knuckleballs, off-speed pitches. Just depends yeah. on can, can you be patient John. enough. Yeah. The good thing about Coach John, he puts you at, like, different positions because you learn from your mistakes. That's what he says. You learn by doing it. Like, you're not going to be – like, we have this thing, like, for uh, base running. You have mm -hmm. the green light at for, first. You don't have a steal sign because if you don't steal, how are you going to learn from the mistakes you make? Yeah. I love it. Sounds like he empowers you guys a lot, puts you guys in control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you know, we call our own pitches, like catchers call their own pitches. That's it. like because then like sometimes he gives us like say it's like an OT count. He usually calls mm -hmm. like higher fastball to change the eye yeah. level. Gotcha. Now don't give all your recruiting tips away here. Like we don't want to give all the tips away to the next teams you're playing. So <laughs> got it, got it though. I got it. He mixes things up for you. Yeah. All right, because we want Arsenal to continue to win. So, and, yeah. well, and and look, if you're at first this week and it's a tie ball game, we got a runner at first, and you got to get that third out at first. I mean, you got the winning run at third, and you need to get the third out at first. Boy, you better dive, get that ball, whatever. Yeah. All right? Can't be losing the game because you miss a scoop. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So, we're at the end of the show because this thing is has is, is been – pretty freaking awesome and we could sit here for a couple more hours i'm sure so um a couple things we're going to ask you one more question that we ask everyone on the show um but this has been awesome like you guys talk like mature ball players so and we are. i like it yeah, i like it if you want to be treated like mature professional ball players you got to do something first and you got to show them that you can do it then they'll expect it of you Yes, sir. Uh, cool. All right. Last question that we got. You're walking up to bat. I want to know what your walkout song is. Oh, Mr. walk up. Oh, no. All right. That's a We're... good question to ask. All right. All I don't right. know so, if I'm ready for this, Aaron. I, I know. I gotta check real quick. I, I'm pretty positive I won't know half of their answers, but mm -mm. you're gonna know mine. You're gonna know mine. Uh, you're uh, not yeah. gonna know mine. My phone's at three seven. All right, here we go. Phone's at three. Sammy, yeah, Sammy, you're going first, man. What's your walkout song? If you happy and you know it. <laughs> like, clap your hands? Mm hmm Who sings that? Yeah, yeah. it's just a child song. Coco Melon. Is that, what you Melon. is that what you play at the ballpark? Yep. Do the, do the fans and everybody get into it? <laughs> do you walk up to bat and uh, slap your hands, too, and stuff? I would, but there's only so much dirt on my hands. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. 
All right, little Devereaux. Yep. What's your what's uh, your walkout song? My walkout song is "Superhero" by Metro Boomin. Superhero Met- by Metro. Sorry, um, hold up. Oh. I can I can play it. I have it up. I have it up. I'm still just picturing the if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, and the entire crowd just like you listen, and then it echoes. Like I could see that being played over a major league stadium, just the speaker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nobody. I, I, have, like, I will def- I'll I'll definitely look that one up for you. <laughs> All right, Michael. Yeah. Michael. All right, you're walking up the bat. I bet you got a good look. Let me tell you something. You look like a dude that could have been on the sand lot. You just got that look about you. Um what's your what's your walkout song? Um uh, um uh, maybe right. drip, drip, or, drip or drown. Drip or drown. Drip or drowned. That sounds like a new one for me. Who sings that? Oh uh, let me see. All right, okay. you look. You look that up. We're gonna. We'll come back oh, to you. Oh, gonna, 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 oh, gonna. Yeah. Um, our guest that we had last week, his song was gonna. It was be nice or something like that. Um, it was. It was a. It was a different one. All right, Cooper. Um, Father Stretch My Hands Part One by Kanye West from The Life of Pablo. Okay. Okay. I know Kanye West is, so I get a little credit here, but what was the name of that song? Father Stretch My Hands. Father Stretch My Hands. Allie and Jen, is that what you heard? I think so, yeah. Father Stretch My Hands, but part one. Part one. Part one. Part okay. two is not good. Okay, all right. Part one. Um, I mean, if I for my other team, I have a different workup song. Okay, what is but it? It's in Spanish. It's called Kulikitaka. Okay. What does awesome. that mean in English? No, it's just random letters. Sing it, sing it. It's, it's a, it's like a Dominican merengue. It's like the one with merengue. all the whistles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that one. All the whistles. Okay. All right. Well, look, I'm I'm ready for TikTok boy. Michael, yeah, what what okay. you've got to have some hot drip mess that you okay. come up with, and I don't even know if that even right. makes any sense at all. But what it's you got? It's either, um, you know, run this town. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Run this town, or just like, just for like a fun one, I do uh, right for the oh, creek. Oh, that's that's the fun song that you do. Already. Gritty. Now, do you Already. do you now? That's the gritty, right? Yeah. Do you do the gritty up to the box? Well, no, not necessarily. But my last summer when I hit last year, I did the gritty to home. Home. Now, what would Coach John or Coach Mike say if you grittied up to the batter's box when the song was on? What would they tell you? Better get no, hit. I, I wouldn't even do it myself. My dad would not get. My dad would not be happy. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. My, my social study teacher does the gritty sometimes. She does. So that, he does. Yeah, he does. Wait a minute. Like getting the gritty up to the box. If you strike out, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> better you better get a if you gritty up to the box. No, you better go yard if you do the gritty up to the box. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen better some kids do it. I've donkey. seen. I've seen some kids. I've seen a kid do a split in the in the box before. That's like that's banana ball. I would do it. Yeah, that's banana, banana ball. ball. Yeah, that's banana ball. Banana ball. I'm doing like I'm doing a backflip. A okay. cartwheel. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, your time might come. So, yeah. and I am uh, very interested to see what you come up with. <laughs> Mr. Right. Ryan Terry, what's your walkout song, dude? Is Ben by 4-1. What's the name of it again? Ben. Ben? Ben. Ben. Okay. Gotcha. Hmm. You know what? It's really, it's like, it's a good walk-up song. Because like they don't talk, they just like it's like a an artist. It's instrumental. Gotcha. Well, I, the only song that I actually confidently can say that I know is "Are You Happy?" and you know it. <laughs> Tammy, you win this one. What about the gritty? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. 
I have to go with happy and you know what? All right. Now here's the question that we really, here's the two answers we're really interested in seeing. Do you guys know what your walkout song for your coaches would be? Oh yeah. Something Ooh. I feel like coach John, coach John would go with journey. journey <laughs> don't stop believing. Yeah. Don't stop. That would, don't stop believing. That would be coach John's. And then coach, you got to ask little diva. What co- coach big, uh, but I don't even know. Coach John would be back in black. <laughs> no, you feel rushing out to it. Coach, Coach Devo would have like um. No, Coach Devo would have Biggie, Biggie, uh, like a, <laughs> okay, Big Papa, Biggie. Big Papa. That would work. Oh, no, like, hypnotize, like, hypnotize, hypnotize, hypnotize though. Yeah, hypnotize is going. Can't or like um, they call me Big Papa or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Look at these tight pants, bro. He's Big Papa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. That's right, Mike. Like, like a speedster song, like a like a lightning or whatever. Thunderstruck. They should have the lightning oh, McQueen. Thunderstruck. That's a good one. Okay. All right, Coach Mike. What would it be? Let's see what he said. Let's see what his answer would be. Well, obviously, I didn't have backup songs back Walk in the day. Song. Yeah, but that's a tough one. Uh, I think it would have been. Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five is like a jungle sometimes. There you go. You guys know that song? I do. No. no. Or you could do the one where you put your hands and in- listen. If y'all don't know that song and you like today's rap and hip hop, all of that stuff is built on Grandmaster Flash. Yes. yes. Hold on, let me search it up. Jungle sometimes. Oh yeah. Yeah, someone needs to play it. I'll play. I'll Add play. It I'll play. Your playlist. All right. Well, while we're while we're while we're <laughs> queuing it up, Coach John, what what's yours? They said I would journey. definitely go with, I would go with journey. Okay, is, is that message, your favorite? Is the message good? Journey. With That's journey the message. Song. The message. We can't hear it. Cooper, can't no one can it, hear it. Where's the thing? <laughs> nah, this is definitely not it. <laughs> Great, <Grandmaster laughs> Flash. This Great. is Coach John. Coach John. All right, Coach John, you said journey. Which song? Probably you got to believe. Okay. Nice. That's it. Oh, yeah. And now, That's just what I was playing. Now, there is so many artists that have sampled that. Mm-hmm. And, and That's you'll know. Yep. And so you, you will think that, I want to say, was it? Yeah, there's been several people that sampled that song. I had, mm-hmm. to, I had to sit and think a little bit. But well, very cool. So we had some pretty awesome walkout songs. So I got some homework to do because I usually go back and look up all these songs and we add them to our uh, Spotify playlist. So if you guys want to hear and listen to the walkout songs that we've had so far on the show, um, you might find you might find a new Ryan. one. Ryan, you might got to chill with that. <laughs> all right, I got one last question, and because I just got to ask it. And, and then we're going to close out the show. Sammy, if, if you were on the Sandlot, which character would you be? Oh, that's so easy. Oh, I, Sammy, I, haven't wa- easy. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it in so long. <laughs> Can't remember the characters. <laughs> let me pass. Let me pass. All right. We'll, pa- we'll pass. pass. Uh, Michael. <laughs> non, the non-Devro Michael. Uh, uh, Benny. Benny the oh, Jet, yeah. I would have guessed that oh, one for yeah. you. I would have guessed that one. Ryan, Sandlot, which which character are you? Benny. Uh, I'm probably the Benny one. Ben. I don't know their names, but I'm probably the one that lost the ball. <laughs> oh, okay. Smalls. Smalls. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Cooper, what about you? I like the catcher, man. He's bears. I want to be the catcher. All I right. Talk the most smack, but then I hit nukes. So I can back it up. Yeah. And you can grab you. Or, yeah. No, not smalls. Porter. Um, Porter. Porter. The dude in the glasses. Porter. I, Porter. Porter. Seven, Porter. Seven, Porter. Seven, yeah, Porter. Seven, Porter. Seven. Squints. Right. I want to be. I like squints. Wait, I think squints. I remember. I think I remember. Because he's right. got a. Sammy, which one are you? I think I'd be. Uh, I think his name was Ham. Ham? Yeah, Porter Hamlin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Porter. Yeah. All right, that's the catcher. We got two left. Little Devereaux. Yeah. Which character would you be? 
Uh, if I'm being so honest with you, I never seen that movie. What? <laughs> As a baseball you're, player, you're, you're your dad's got some answers. Baseball. He's got some. He's got well, some answering to do there. He's seen the bad news bears. Okay, oh, yeah, there you go. Good. Hey, look, <laughs> you you need to go watch Sandlot, dude. Like it, it's I, it's pretty. I'll awesome. do that tonight. No, you there won't. You go. <laughs> <laughs> My right, Micah. time. My bedtime's in 50 minutes. I, I feel like I know which character you would be. Sometimes I listen to kids and I can sort of imagine which character, but I want to hear what you say. Um, I'd definitely be Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Okay. All right. That Benny the Jet. Yeah. I thought we had a few Benny the Jets on here. I, nobody who was Squint? Nobody said Squint. Cooper, you yeah, said Squint. Cooper did. Cooper said Squint. Uh-huh. Wait, who said who said Benny? I said Squint. I said Benny. How would you be Benny? <laughs> uh, well, hold on. We got a question know. for Cooper now that he said squints. So, did you choose that character because you like Wendy Peppercorn? Oh. 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 I think he, oh. oh. <laughs> he had to exit. He had to exit. He's hiding because he's all red. <laughs> it's okay. Her, ba- her, her bathing suit was red, too. So, just like your face. <laughs> like my hair. Was a <laughs> oh, and the hair. Oh, you can't. I can make it stick up straight. Just gonna, like, oh, okay. twist it. Is that Ryan Sandberg on your back wall back there? Look at that. No, it's Javi Baez. Oh. That was really, really young. Do you yeah, guys know who Ryan Sandberg young. is? Yeah. He's yeah. All right. Yeah, well, my, that's my dad's favorite player. I have him. I love very him. cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right. Here's the end of the show. All right. So I want to thank everyone for listening and have all that fun stuff. And Allie, at the end, I want you to be the one that, like, gets these guys together. Until next time. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to thank everyone for listening. Um, Allie is going to say, but until next time, guys. And then you're going to say, are you ready? Are you listening? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We, we will catch you on the slide. We'll catch or you on the slide. Catch on you the on slide? the slide. Catch you on the slide. Okay. okay. All right. Like a, play, a playground slide? No. no like Calm the down, show buddy. slide. Is that like the name of the podcast? Yes, it yes. is. We'll catch you on the slide. We'll catch you on the slide. Well, we had a show two weeks ago that it took us three takes to get it right. So, oh no, one take, one take, one One take, take. one take, one take. We got this. We got this. They did the intro pretty well. I I got faith in them. All right, lock in. All right, now you guys, you guys start thinking about it. Remember, catch you on the slide. I got to say my part here, and then we're gonna close it out. So. Thank you for everyone listening. Thank you to the parents of these kids for allowing them to come on and hang out with us. Um, make sure to go follow us on social media, all of them, TikTok. T- well, I started to say Twitter, but X, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I, I, is there any more that I'm forgetting? TikTok. Oh, I said TikTok. 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 Uh, yeah. What's your TikTok? The Slide Podcast Show. Okay, hold up. Make sure you go follow us, show. okay? Instagram, I, I and TikTok, go and and help us, help us figure out TikTok because it's very confusing. I'm a, I'm I'm too old to figure out that game. So, all right, here we go, Allie. I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you go. All right, until next time, boys. We'll catch, we'll catch you on the slide. slide. Oh, that was I good. thought it was catching. All right, coaches, do you think that was good enough? No, no. we got to do that. No, no, we'll yeah, we said, I thought she said, we'll, we'll catch you on, and then I thought we said the slide. Yep. You guys got to lock in. Catch yeah, you on the slide. In. Tell them, Michael. Lock it in. We'll catch you on the slide. All right. There we go. All right, Allie. That was a good one there. All right. Here we go. And until next time, boys, we'll, we'll catch, catch, you, on catch you on the slide. There we go. That was good. Very nice. Thank you for having me. We thank you for toughing it out and pushing through. Now, let's go teach the world great sportsmanship, leadership, to go inspire someone through your dedication and excitement for the game. Make sure to smash the like and follow button on all social media at the Slide Podcast Show and the Slide Pod on Twitter. Plus, leave us a review and feedback. Until next time. Until next time, we'll catch you on the slide. On the slide.